Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Julius, let's jump into the first thing. Who is the best basketball player in NBA or MMA history? Let me know who that is. Let's see. I would, I'm going to have to go Julius Juicebox Walker, man. You're talking to him right now. All right. All right. <laughs> explain. Explain this uh, the status that you have. <laughs> you know, I, um, I, I, I probably need to fact check myself. I probably need to look into, uh, into who else is all. Who else all has basketball credentials in MMA? But you know, I played I played a little bit of college ball, and uh, I think if you look through MMA history, I don't think any of those guys are taking me one on one, man. I've seen I've right, seen well, a couple of UFC I've seen a couple of UFC guys. Uh, I saw I saw the big the big boy Despania trying to dunk a basketball. He couldn't even dunk it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was interesting, right? That was odd. Like he's uh, super tall and very athletic. <laughs> yeah. And it just can't jump. No, at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I've seen guys that are like, like, like jacked, you know what I mean? Like, they look like bodybuilders. Yeah. And you would never expect them to be able to, like, play ball because they're no. so big and, like, they got, like, 22-inch arms and stuff. And then, like, not even athletic at all. And then all of a sudden, I see them dunking a basketball. I'm like, dude, how, how does that even happen? The explosion. I don't know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But um, man, um, your career, man, it act your pro career actually started last year, twenty twenty three. You know, you went uh two and zero at heavyweight. You know, how was how was those two fights, man? When you could when you could uh like recap the year for yourself, like how was how was the year for you? It was a good one. Um, very very solid twenty twenty three. Uh, definitely grew a lot. Was able to get the pro career started. Um, would have would have liked to potentially. Um, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. I ha- I had a lot going on. I graduated college. Um, I got married. You know, I had two two professional fights. Um, I I think this year I'm gonna be be able to hopefully get get three in, get three or four in. You know, so I think that'll be really awesome. Yeah, you got like a couple of the major milestones in life covered right in that year yep. <laughs> yep. it was a big one it was a big one pro debut yeah. you know college marriage graduation like yeah, yeah man wow man you got well it's better to happen early right so then now you can just you know take care of your family and then now everything actually your career is taking care of what you established in your first year of your career right yep we're, we're working on it man trying to uh trying to grow this avenue yeah and you know um this fight coming up is going to be at light heavyweight. It's your first time as a professional fighting at light heavyweight for the ti- It's for the title, right? Synergy yep. title. Yep. Okay. Main ball. event. You know what I mean? Like, what do you think of this opportunity? It's a big one for sure. Um, you know, my opponent's a guy that he was, he was on the ultimate fighter in 2022. Um, so I know that I know that he's a guy that's fought at the highest level, um, not not necessarily the highest level, but one of the highest levels. Um, mm-hmm. He's he's a really really experienced guy, good wrestling, um, really strong, powerful wrestler. I think for me to have an opportunity like this, though, this is the perfect type of opponent um, for somebody with my style. You know, um, for for my big for my first big opportunity, my first big up big step up in competition to be against a wrestling heavy person when i'm a when i'm a grappler myself um i i couldn't ask for anything better honestly yeah and you know the the weight you know what i mean like that will be something that people will be watching to see if uh you know you're you're comfortable at heavyweight right what was what was that like just fighting at heavyweight for for the first three fights and not really worrying about you know what I mean, the cut dude dude uh skipping out on the weight cut man that it's, it's a lot of fun I had I had quite a few. I actually man, I actually fought at eighty five once as an amateur, and uh, mm-hmm. that that I hated that. Um, and that that was kind of you see after eighty five. That's where I really started fighting the heavyweight a bunch. You know, just yeah. it's you you could just jump in there. Um, I like I like having um, having that weight limit, having the, having to cut the weight, having to make two five. I think it almost forces me to be a bit more disciplined um, mm-hmm. with my with my diet and with my training. Um, and I definitely think that this is the weight class for me. I'm, I'm much more, I'm much leaner 
going to be a lot lighter on my feet. I think my cardio is better here at 205. I mm-hmm. tried to tell myself, oh, not having to cut weight makes my cardio get heavy. I think it's even better at 205 now, um, you know, shedding that, that 30-pound weight vest. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot. You know, I've, I've I've talked to other fighters about this as well. You know, I mean, people are like, why is this guy cutting weight? Like, he shouldn't be doing this and doing that. You know, and these are people online, right? So they don't know shit. Um, but, uh, but like, for yourself, you know what I mean? Like, they, they were telling me, like, yeah, man, I need that suffering a little bit. I need yeah. that. I need it because it kind of puts me into this animalistic mode, you know what I mean, right before the fight, and it kind of puts me at another level. Do you feel that that's a possibility? Oh, a hundred percent. Um, being, being like the way my, I think I train best whenever I'm a little hungry, at least, you know what I mean? Um, in terms of like when I've eaten last, I like to, I like to be approaching the point of like, of approaching a little bit of hunger, um, whenever I'm, whenever I'm training. And I think there's something to that. Um, I definitely think going through the weight cut the week of the fight, if you do it the right way, um, that's definitely key what is beneficial um you know just forcing forcing me to be on top of my diet for me helps a lot when i was a heavyweight um you know i'm walking around 20 pounds under 15 20 pounds under the weight limit so i'm able to you know eat whatever i want at literally any point that have having no restrictions whatsoever um and at times that definitely got the better of me i definitely think that having the having the weight just, just having to make the weight alone, um, it forces you to treat it as something where you, you have an obligation and it just, it just, there's a level of professionalness to it. Um, I see guys, you know, we see guys miss weight all the time and everybody always has an excuse. There's always a reason that they miss weight, but at the end of the day, man, you accept it to show up at this time and weigh this amount. Um, and, and to be able to do that, just it, it shows that you're professional and that um, it's just the first step in being prepared and ready to go, you know? Yeah, you know, people are like, is, is this fighter hungry? And you're like, yeah, they're literally hungry yeah. training. <laughs> That's why, <they're... laughs> That's why they go so hard, man. <laughs> right, right. Maybe being a little bit of a jerk sometimes, um, you know, but but hey, it's uh, it's good. It's, it's all good. It's good, man. And, you know, preparation for this, did you tweak anything differently? You know what I mean? It, you know, you, it says that you're going five rounds. Is that, is that, mm-hmm. is that, you know, you've never been past the first round. So I doubt you're thinking about the fifth. <laughs> well, no, man, I'm, I, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm always, I want to be prepared for, you know, all five, of course. Um, this, this is the first time, like as an amateur, I fought to decision, I think four times. Um, but those are three minute rounds, you know? Um, and I only fought, uh, three rounds in those decisions. So to, to the longest I've ever fought in one night is nine minutes. Um, this fight could go 25. I definitely really pushed it as hard as I could. Um, did a little, more, little bit more cross training as well. This camp mm-hmm. cross train with some guys up in St. Louis. Um, really, really solid guys up there. Really, really solid gyms. And I think that'll be, that'll show it was really beneficial. And I added a, uh, boxing coach, a specific boxing coach, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's really going to show as well in the in the cage. Yeah, it seems like uh, guys that are more grapplers at the start, mm-hmm. right? Because everybody starts with something. You know, you see a lot of kids now starting with everything, but usually they yeah. they have one strength, that's something that they're elite at, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like it seems like a lot of the grapplers they they are more like fixated and more like I guess in tune with boxing rather than. Mm-hmm. Why is that for you, especially like, why is boxing something that you went out and got a coach for? Um, I would say for me, just my style, um, the, the, the type of athlete that I am, um, I think that having really solid boxing, um, really sound fundamentals and sharp hands will go a really long way for me in MMA. It's, it's not, obviously it's not kind of the, the cap on what I want to add to my striking mix. But I, I feel like if I analyze myself as a fighter right now, you know, there I obviously I want to improve in every area. But mm-hmm. <clears throat> one facet I really wanted to take some specific time to work on was the hands and just specifically mm-hmm. the hands. Um, there, there's so much that goes into MMA. You know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. there's punches, kicks, elbows, knees, clinch work, uh, your takedowns, stopping takedowns, the grappling on the ground, sweeps and submissions. 
Um, there's so much to learn. And I think sometimes it's easy to get away from practicing things, literally just like having a great jab, you know, having a great one, two. Um, so I wanted to get back to the basics a little bit um, and start feeling like I'm trying to master things rather than just be good at things. Um, and I thought with, with boxing, with it just being the hands, um, it's, it's, you really can perfect it. Like if you look at championship level boxers, those dudes are all elite. Like if it's, it's, you know, I, I think it was Mighty Mouse who said MMA was the easier sport to be good at. Um, and there's actually something to that because in boxing, you truly, you have to be an elite boxer. It's that simple. In MMA, if you're pretty good at everything, um, there's a chance you're going to be able to exploit one of your opponent's weaknesses. Um, and I think it's important to try to pick things out and become elite at certain things so that you're going to be able to exploit your opponent's weaknesses. And I think boxing was one that just, it just made sense to me. Yeah. And also with boxing, you get to kind of sit down on your, on your shots. You know what I mean? Do you feel that? Do you feel the power kind of coming along more and more and more? Oh, definitely. I think, um, some, some of the biggest holes, like if I go back and I look at some, some stuff from earlier, in my earlier in my career and some things that all my coaches have told me, um, is that my, my hips were always a little bit too tight. Um, mm -hmm. and I think really sitting down and turning my hips over on my punches, I can really crack. Like, you know, most of, if, if, you know, if you watch a lot of tape on me, most of the time in my fights, we are grappling. Um, you know, I've had some fights where there's a little bit more, a little bit more exchanging on the feet, but the majority of the time that I'm in the cage with grappling, I haven't showed a lot of my hands. Um, and I think they're pretty quick and I think they're pretty powerful. Um, and whenever I really land on, whenever I land on somebody like this Saturday, for example, um, I think that mm -hmm. I've got the power to sit people on their ass. And I think that, uh, that I'm going to show that. Yeah, it's like when like you're in you're early in your you know pro career, so you get to kind of see like little doors open and like you're let's say you're a house, so you get to see little doors open, little hallways, yeah. which are like skills that are being like explored in every single fight, right? It's mm -hmm. it's cool to see. That's what fighting, man. Like you said, MMA is there's so much to do. There's so many options. There's so many variables. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, man. When you when you watch someone fight and then they show something new. You're like, man, then you start thinking like, have they been working on this whole time? It just came out now? Or is this yeah. something they just worked on in this camp? You just never know, right? You just It just mm -hmm. comes out. Exactly. And it's it's because at some point in every camp, too, you get to the point where you're not really working on as much new stuff. And then even when you do learn something new, like if, if, if I learned something new and I was just loving it, and it, but it's two weeks out from a fight, the chances of me pulling it out in the fight are low just because um, I haven't had the time to drill it. Um, but after you've really added something into your game, it's really nice. MMA, it's kind of funny. It's like an RPG. You know, we've only got so many skill points to upgrade ourselves. Um, in each camp, we've only got so many skill points that we can drop into our different little attributes. Um, and it's it's always fun trying to pick and choose where you're going to put your focus going into each opponent, you know. What, what do you want to – what type of fight do you want this weekend? You know what I mean? I know you want to raise your hand and get the belt wrapped yeah. around your waist, but what type of fight? You know – Whenever we were, whenever you lock two guys in the cage and we start hitting each other in the face, um, you have a tendency to go back to what you know. Um, and I know that what my opponent knows is wrestling. He, he's going to want this to be a, a wrestling heavy affair and turn it into a wrestling match. Um, and I just want to make it a fight. Even if we are, even if we're grappling, um, I want to make sure that everything's painful whether it's for me him or both of us um i want it to be a fight i need that that's the mindset that i'm approaching this thing with like the whole time every, everything that he does if he if he has any success it's gonna have to hurt um and he's gonna have to go through something to get there mm -hmm. so that that's what i'm looking for i'm looking to make this a fight i'm looking to make it you know if it has to get a little ugly that's fine um I really, I just want it. I just, I don't want it to be fun for either one of us is basically what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the best mentality I have, right? Is that it's going to hurt and mm -hmm. it's I, not going to be easy. I think we as uh, MMA fighters, we're a lot of the time we get really worried about uh, preparing to kill. Um, but I think the best way to, 
to get the kill is to is to focus your preparation more on preparing to die. Because um, if you're prepared to die, then you know you should be able to should be able to get the job done. Yeah, man. That's one one thing about fighters is like they could get in that mode. Average human beings will never understand that. They will never be able to even put themselves in that mode of like ready to die and all this stuff. Like me, I don't even, I'm not a fighter, so I don't even understand like what goes through a fighter's mind. You could explain it to me, but it's hard to know unless you experience it yourself. And you're going to experience it, man. June 1st, Synergy FC 13, main event, like heavyweight titles on the line, Kansas City, Kansas. Julius, thank you so much, man. You're going to have a lot of juice boxes? Like, is that how you celebrate juice (laughs) boxes? Hey, yeah, dude, you know, just 100%, 100% apple juice, man. Maybe a little bit. (laughs) There you go. There you go.